Okay, this is a fiction book. This is uh, Area 51 by Bob Mayer. And it was published in 1997. Now, interesting story about how I first uh, heard about this book. I actually bought my own copy years later because uh, originally I was working a job where I worked in an evening shift and I would kill time towards the end of my shift by reading reading books and uh, some of the ones that I've done on this channel. And I was reading The Mysterious Valley by uh, um, Christopher O'Brien and one of my coworkers saw that and she was like, oh, you might like this book I'm reading called Area 51. So she brought it up to me and I read that for the next few nights. So um, this is a uh, fictional story that that is that tries to kind of tie up all the uh, and I think this is the beginning book of a series because when I went to go find this um, he's evidently followed this up with a, a number of other books um, and I'm gonna have some spoiler uh, sp some spoilers in here so if you haven't read this if you're curious about this um, it is it is a fun read there's no um, uh, you, there's no bigger there's a few things I'm going to talk about here that, but there's not anything in here that I'd say, you know, you just got to read this to really understand what's happening in the world. So um, anyway, so spoiler alert ahead. But uh, the, the premise here is that um, these, uh, these guys stumble onto this, some kind of weird plot involving, of course, alien technology. And... Um, one of the things that fascinated me about it is there's a chapter in here where he goes to one of the main characters, infiltrates the alleged Dulce underground facility. And the interesting thing is he actually cites some of the correct um, Indian reservation roads. Um, he actually calls them by the, the proper name in here. And I'll have to see if I can find that where, um, but uh, he actually cites the, the correct roads and gives a, so that kind of stuff always jumps out at me is like, you know, you wonder what some of these guys really know or who they were talking to when they were writing this book. I know a lot of, a lot of guys will have, sometimes will have pretty good sources that will give them some information. So that made me wonder if I read this right on the heels of having visited that area. So I was, very interested in his description of the Dulce facility. Um, so there's some good information in here on that of just very, very brief, not, not enough to really buy the book. But uh, the final kind of moment in this is, is this reveal, and this is the spoiler, that uh, nuclear weapons do not exist, that the actual two nuclear devices at Hiroshima and Nagasaki were actually these alien devices that were set off in those two locales. Um, and that the rest of the nuclear program is, is all a certain amount of like military theater to dupe the public into going along with this other plot that's happening. Um, and some of you have commented about the idea of nuclear weapons as a hoax or nuclear weapons being a, a fiction uh, to drive foreign policy. And I personally, I'm, I, that's one of those areas kind of like aliens. Obviously, I've never witnessed a nuclear explosion. I don't have enough firsthand knowledge to make a hard case one way or the other. So I do want to look into that because I find that interesting. And I don't, that's one of those things that in the last 20 years, uh, I've hit a point where I don't think that would be, I don't rule that out. Um, I'll tell you my, my personal experience, I've got a, uh, my father flew in a, a P2V uh, spy plane that was armed with its kind of get out, out of jail free card was a, I think it was a 20 megaton nuclear depth charge. And uh, there was a whole protocol they had to go through to load this onto the aircraft and take it off and all kinds of things that were about it were classified that uh, I don't, that he, I'm pretty sure he's told me it all by now, but um, but now, granted, he never saw one of these set off, so I don't know, was this pure theater with a loading a giant prop into his aircraft? You know, who knows? Uh, 
then I, I also have a, uh, an acquaintance who has since passed away who claimed to have been part of a safety team that was helping coordinate underground blasts that were nuclear blasts um, all over the country. And supposedly the reason he started talking was this was in 2008 when gas prices shot up and they started dipping into the petroleum reserves and they started talking about these huge underground petroleum reserves. And he said, well, I guess since they're talking about it, I can talk about what we did. And he talked about how they had blasted these huge spherical cavities out using nuclear charges underground to create uh, these underground reserves for petroleum, or at least that's what he was told. And again, that's one of those things where was he told what the real purpose of the program was? There, that's anybody's guess. That is such a compartmentalized field. Um, it's very possible he could have gone there, served his purpose, helped with the blast, and he had no clue what was going to wind up in this giant chamber they just created. Um, but uh, he uh, remarked that he thought it was pretty funny that in a lot of these places it would be reported the next day. For example, one of the blasts that they did in uh, uh, was beneath Las Vegas. And he said the next day it was reported in one of the Las Vegas newspapers as, a, as an earthquake, and he thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but he felt like he personally could talk about this openly uh, once they started dipping into the strategic reserves and started describing some of these places. He thought, oh, well, I guess I'm free to talk now. Um, also, uh, there, there's a, a gentleman I, I'm in contact with now, and I don't want to give too much away. He's an older guy that was actually present right at an above ground detonation when he was very young. And he was there because his dad was one of the uh, physicists working on this. And then he and his mom had to be whisked away um, right before they detonated it, but they were still close enough that they witnessed the detonation. And uh, he's described some of that to me. So uh, I say all that to say, and I'll, I'll throw in one more thing. I, I have a customer who were, was a fueler for liquid-fueled uh, missiles, the Atlas Missile Program. I think that's right. I think that's what it was. But, um, and he told me when they, would, when they retired some of these missiles, they took some of them out to a range out in California to shoot off, and he said a lot of them were duds. So anyway, so to, just to wrap that all up, on the subject of nuclear weapons and the idea of that being a hoax or, you know, you know, theater for the general public. Um, I don't rule that out, but I don't feel like I have enough information on that to really go one way or the other. Um, are there incredibly powerful explosives that are used? Yes, most definitely. Um, is there a certain amount of theater po possibly associated with nuclear weaponry uh, for the sake of scaring the public and other nations? I would say that's a very high probability. Um, but again, I'm, I'm an agnostic there, and I'm uh, someone in a comment section earlier recommended a book, which I just ordered on Amazon, so I'll check some of that out. And I appreciate all your feedback on this subject. Um, this channel is, uh, I, I want to put out as much information as I've discovered, but I also am open to uh, theories that I've not heard about and other information that I've not considered before. I'm open to that. I just like to make sure I verify it and check it out as much as humanly possible because there is so much disinformation that you have to be very, very, very careful in how you uh, sort through some of this. Uh, so I know that's a, a bit of a departure from Bob Mayer's Area 51, but uh, I think that this, when I, some someone earlier commented about the nuclear weapon thing, and I thought of this book because that's kind of a, a central point to this is that this, these were actually alien devices that got set off. Um, so anyway, I, I, the whole nuclear thing, the whole Cold War, having lived through a good portion of that, really intrigues me. And the idea of some of that being, or all of it even, being uh, political theater uh, is intriguing. And uh, again, the way the, the world has gone in the last 20 years, I can't say that I rule it out. So... Um, I also think it's important to realize there could be something happening going the other direction. I wondered at the time when the Moab device was used in uh, uh, Tora Bora, 
when they there was so much press surrounding that. Hey, we have the largest non-nuclear device ever. It's this huge bomb, and we're calling it Moab, mother of all bombs, and we're going to drop it, and it's going to basically suck all the air out of this canyon area or this mountain area and kill all the guys living in caves in it. And uh, But it's going to be the biggest non-nuclear device. And there was rumor at the time that that was a cover to hide an actual low-yield nuclear weapon being detonated on the battlefield. There were also rumors of uh, tactical nuclear devices being used in Iraq and um, Syria and Yemen. If you look up like nuke Syria or nuke Yemen, there's some blasts that look like they could very possibly be nuclear in uh, and in nature, uh, you see the weird like proton bombardment happening, these little sparkles in the air that aren't like sparks, but basically the sensor and the camera being hit with this radiation. So there's some things like that that I wonder, could it be the other way around where we have um, a certain amount of uh, smokescreen of propaganda around the actual tactical use of nuclear weapons? And uh, you know, then you get into a lot of the uh, Gulf War syndrome and things like that. So again, this is an area where I think is wide open for investigation, and it takes some very sober study to pick that apart and figure out what is and what is not um, fiction there. So anyway, I appreciate all of your comments and contributions on that. Uh, j again, I'm a dude that's trying to figure this all out, just like all of you. I'm not here to push a specific party line. Uh, other than I want to uh, just uncover it all and figure it all out and uh, go my way. And anyway, so enough of that. Bob Mayer's Area 51, I'm sure if he stumbles onto this review, is probably going to be horrified that I attached all this commentary to it. But there you go. Bob Mayer's Area 51 from 1997. Fun read, fun uh, kind of chewing gum for the mind, as it were.